Hey everybody, my name is Steve Hughes and welcome back to my channel. We talk about all things related to financial services here, but primarily we focus on the incredibly lucrative, profitable niche market of final expense and mortgage section. I lean a little bit towards the mortgage section, but uh, look, our job as agents is that we go out and match the client, their medical conditions with the right product. So people ask me all the time, do you sell final expense or do you sell mortgage section? I sell them all, okay? I buy mortgage section leads. I don't buy final expense leads. However, again, our job as agents is to sell what they qualify for. That could very well be final expense, even though they wanted mortgage session. Not the purpose of the video. See how we get off on a, we go off a tangent there, but it's a good point to, to, to get your head around. And we are in the nod med industry, but this video is about, I had a conversation. This comes up a lot, but this one really kind of impacted me because we went back and forth on text for a little bit. By the way, look at the thing going across the screen and just scrolling. Uh, we have got things going on right now in virtual. Virtual sales has gone viral. Go look at my last video and take a look at it. Um, but we got a lot of people out there making a lot of money sitting at home right now. Uh, so not because they have to, because we are a essential business, according to every state that I know of. So we can still run face to face. However, who would not want to make multiple six figures working from home? I think that uh, that list is long and deep, uh, especially now with uh, the COVID situation going on. Many people lost their businesses and lost their jobs. Getting back to the video. The purpose of this video is, is that, you know, I was going back and forth on with some text about who's the best IMO, the number one without question, question that I get. And I've said a thousand times is I don't believe it's just about the IMO. I think it's also about who you sign up with. And that, that should be part of your decision process is, you know, interviewing the, the, uh, the coach uh, and make sure that they know what they're talking about. Make sure they're leading from the front, make sure they know how to sell insurance and they're not just a recruiter. So it's not just about the IMO and we're going back and forth on text and I go, you know, it's a big decision because, you know, asking me who the number one IMO is out there, who the one I favor and who the one I'm with, right? Our agency is with is not the only question you should be asking. The question is, is that what is the number one uh, priority? What is the number one thing you should be looking at? And I believe the number one thing is it's all about who you sign up with, right? And hopefully you'll find a, a, a great coach, mentor at least the front that's putting their name on applications and can teach you from a, from a time tested and proven system that he or she has in place, right? In other words, they've been selling insurance themselves successfully and they have a system they can plug you into because most of these IMOs don't have any training. Ours has, has good training, but honestly, the day-to-day case-by-case ground level, hey, John, Judy, Sue, Jim, you know, what product do I choose for this client is not going to come from the IMO. It's going to come from somebody that's coaching and mentoring you, teaching you the right skills in order to succeed in this business, right? And that's why I say it's so important to make sure you, you got, you're asking both questions, okay? And so he didn't understand that. that he says, well, you know, I said, well, you know, who are you signing up with? Do you know who you're Well, yeah, the IMO is XYZ, right? I go, that's not who you're signing Who are you signing up with, right? He goes... The IMO is XYZ. I go, you don't understand what I'm saying. The carriers are not signing you up. The IMO is not signing you up. It's the person you spoke to on the phone that introduced you to the IMO that's signing you up. Even though the IMO paperwork that they send you, the onboarding agreement, might have the IMO's name on it, right? You are talking to a recruiter or someone that's building an agency, and that's who you're tied with. So let me show this to you, okay? Right? You have the IMO, right? This IMO is contracted with several carriers, insurance companies. Right? Mutual Law, Transamerica, AIG, GPM, CFG, Royal Neighbors, whatever. They had the relationships with the carriers. That's why it's important, right, to make sure you have a lot of carriers because more carriers means that you're not going to be walking away from business and you're more competitive. Remember, as I said at the beginning of the video, our goal is to match the client, right, with the right carrier and the right products based on their budget and medical conditions. So it stands the reason that the more carriers that the IMO has, 
the more options that you're going to have in selecting the right product for that client and not lose the business, right? Okay, so the IMO is ultimately a broker, so to speak, in the insurance industry, much like Keller Williams or Century 21 is in real estate, where the agents sign up with the broker and the broker deals directly with the mortgage bank, mortgage lending institutions, banks, whatever, okay? Now, you're talking to someone that's building an agency, right? Which is an agent of this IMO, okay? Right? This is the connection. This agent that you're speaking to on the phone is tied into an IMO, okay? Now, you come along, you, the agent and you have a conversation, you decide that you're gonna work together, right? And you're gonna sign up. He, he initiates with the IMO, right, paperwork, and they send you an onboarding agreement, right, a contracting package, so that you can sign up with the IMO and their carriers, okay? Here's my point. This relationship right here between you and the agent is going to be there for as long as you are with the IMO. Period. Okay? You're not direct to the IMO. The IMO sends you the paperwork, the contracting packet, on behalf of the agent. Let's just say this is Susan. Okay? And you're, when you sign this paperwork, you are contracting with Susan with the IMO. Okay? Very, very important that you understand that this relationship right here is never going to change, which is why it's so important for you to make sure that this person knows how to sell insurance, can teach you how to sell insurance, and if they're a producer, and you can verify that if they're a producer or not, that when they get busy, they're going to still take your calls, right? Is there, that's why I say with us, it's a partnership, okay? It's not a... Maybe this is the better way to do it. It's a partnership. It's not a sign-up thing. Uh, it's me, my Angela, and, and, our, and our staff that helps our agent every day, ground-level support, case-by-case, day-to-day, on the way to the appointment, before, during, and after the sale. We help them to get the pendings through. We've developed a system, right, that's unmatched in the industry, in my opinion, right? So that's what we do to serve our agents. That's why we call it a partnership and not a sign-up thing. But again... Most of these IMOs have very little to no support system in place to handle your calls, your emails. They don't have ground level support. You know, they're not going to be able to call them up and say, hey, I'm, I got an appointment this evening. What do you think? They're not in the business for that. They might provide some training at, a, you know, at 30,000 feet above. But this person here is the one that should be providing you that, that day-to-day case-by-case, you know, teaching you the skills of the business. Now, why do I say all that? Because if you understand the person you're signing up with, not the IMO, right? And the IMO has zero training or support. Some of these IMOs won't even let the agent call them because they don't have the resources or staff, so they say, which in my opinion, they should get out of business. They can't take the calls of their agents, which they override their production on, right? But some IMOs out there use that as an excuse. And they'll refer you right back. You call the IMO. They'll refer you right back to Susan because she's your upline like in, you know, Amway or whatever. Multi-level marketing type or network marketing type companies, okay? But why this is so important is, is this person you're tied to. And if that person doesn't sell any insurance and is just a recruiter, right, you are forever tied to this person, very few IMOs will allow you to move. They have an agreement with the, their, their agent that you are locked into them. If the IMOs allowed you to move within the IMO simply because you didn't like Susan, they wouldn't have any builders there because that's a trust factor with the, with the agency builder and the IMO that I put my time in this person, I signed them up, I convinced them to come with us, you know, I brought him to the IMO, right? And therefore, he stays with me. If this person doesn't support you, you don't like this person, they don't have a system for you in place, right? If all any of those things occur, the only way out is to leave the IMO. 
or some of them have the six month rule where you stop producing, right? And then they'll let you move within the IMO with some other agent. Or you can leave the IMO and go to some other IMO, but you still have the six month rule with the carriers. Have a, you may have a contract with the IMO, some have six months to two years, but then you're also gonna have a contract with these carriers up here. All these carriers have six month rules. Regardless of what you hear on other videos, when they say, we don't have a contract, they do have a contract with the carriers, right? And the, con the carriers, I, Mutual Law, Transamerica, Foresters, those companies will not allow you to move your contract with them, not the IMO. The, the IMO might release you, some will, some won't. But when you signed an agreement to work with the carrier, Mutual Law, Transamerica, AIG, whatever, you signed an agreement with them as well. That's a contract. And they're not going to let you out of that contract or they're not going to allow you to move it to a different IMO because, again, there's still that same, just like there's an unwritten law between the IMO and the agent, there's also an unwritten law between the IMO and the carriers that they're not going to let you go bounce all over the industry at will. It just takes too much work and effort to move people, right? So why does this matter? Well, if you don't like the IMO, some will release you. Many, most of them won't. If you want to change your upline, you've got to wait six months. If you want to leave the IMO and move your mutual law contract to a different IMO, you've got to wait six months from the date you signed or the date that you did your last production, the date you submitted production, regardless of whether the application actually got approved. So these are the relationships, which is why it's important for you to understand that when you are interviewing the interviewee or an interviewer, as it were. This guy, this girl that you're signing up with better have a means to teach you and train you on the skills in the business if you want, intend to be successful. Because the IMO may or may not have training. Now, I'm not talking about training you can watch on videos, okay, or you go to a website and watch. I'm talking about, again, a mentor or coach that knows how to sell mortgage section and final expense, they can teach you how to do it, will take your calls every day, all day, in the home, before, during, and after your appointment. That's what I'm talking about. If you make the mistake and you, and you only focus on the IMO, or you only focus on the agent that's signing you up, I get that too. Well, you know, I like Susan. She lives down the street and she's local. Who cares? Look, this is not a local business. It doesn't, most people aren't going to take you for ride-alongs anyway because the numbers substantially decrease. It's, you know, it tends to be a waste of time. People don't, the customer feels ganged up on. We live in a virtual world. You know, we have a bunch of training on Zooms and videos. But when my agents go into homes, before, during, and after the house, we have a conversation with them on the phone. It doesn't have to be in the car. We, we prepare them on the phone. We help select the products and, and get the paperwork ready. That's what I'm talking about. And if you, if you don't make this decision correctly, getting out of it, it can be a nightmare with the IMO or the carriers. That's my point. Hopefully that gets across to you because it's, it's such a critical factor that most people don't understand. Just because the paper's coming from the, the onboarding agreement or the contracting agreement is coming from the IMO, don't kid yourself, there's someone in the middle. Unless you are signing up direct with the IMO, and I don't know any too, too many IMOs anymore that will sign up an agent direct with them, neither will the carriers, you're going to have to go through an agent who's going to refer you to the IMO, and that link is forever created. Hope that helps. If you're interested in talking about virtual sales, this is a year to get involved in virtual sales. You can literally call anywhere in the United States. Your business is not geographically restricted by the amount of leads you can get in your backyard. You can be sitting in Wyoming and calling leads in Hawaii. I highly recommend that you get uh, started. If I can help in any way, shape, or form, give me a call. Thank you for watching these videos. I appreciate it very much. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like. Give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.